good day so uh, today we will talk about network management uh, you know that as the network becomes very large so we need support for managing this network so uh, we need support for keeping track of this network and uh, how that is done that is what we are going to discuss so our today's topic is network management uh, Network management is the process of controlling a complex data network to maximize its efficiency and productivity. The overall goal of network management is to help with the complexity of a data network and to ensure that data can go across it with maximum efficiency and transparency to the users. <coughs> the ISO that is the International Organization for Standards. Uh, uh, network management forum divided network management into five functional areas fault management configuration management security management performance management and accounting management uh, out of this actually it is uh, um, uh, quite often you find that there are uh, two um, um, systems uh, which are deployed in a, in large networks one is the uh, is a network management system the another is an uh, the enterprise management system which usually takes care of uh, uh, the configurations of individual machines etc and the network management uh, does the fault management and performance management these are two aspects which network management always has to take place and it can do some configuration management for uh, some network devices also. Uh, so, we will just quickly run through uh, each one of these. So, fault management is the process of locating problems or faults on the data network. It involves the following steps discover the problem, isolate the problem and fix the problem if possible. Okay. Uh, sometimes it is possible to fix the uh, problem uh, remotely uh, and sometimes it is not possible uh, and of, uh, but first of all discovering the problem is important because there are uh, usually in a large network there are so many hundreds of components which have been deployed maybe over a considerable area um, that uh, you have to have a, a good support for discovering uh, um, uh, discovering the fault. Okay. Uh, discover a, a fault in one part of a network can lead to impairment of services in another part of a network. For example, suppose some uh, uh, switch has become faulty and it is generating a lot of spurious traffic. All right. Now, uh, first thing of course, you have to uh, locate that where, uh, where are all these traffic uh, coming from and then you have to isolate it. Uh, and then uh, fix it. So, sometimes you need to physically go there and fix it, but sometimes you can do it remotely. Uh, but, um, but before you can fix it, you have to discover that there is a problem and this is where the problem lies. So, that is a uh, central part of fault management, uh, <coughs> a very important part uh, that we have to take care. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, the network devices may come up and then again they may be uh, switched off. Okay. So, as they come off and switched off, so what happens is that the topology of the entire network that is not uh, fixed. Okay. Mm. So, uh, some of them may be um, uh, some of them may be off or some of them may be put on and it is not working. Uh, so, anyway uh, the topology of the network is not fixed. So, what uh, uh, network management for fault management what you have to do is first you have to discover which are the areas or which are the elements uh, which are currently on the network and which are put on and working correctly and then you have to see that which others are not working. Uh, I mean maybe they are switched off, maybe they are faulty etcetera. So, you have to get a uh, continuously you have to uh, be in a mode of discovering uh, the topology of the network who all are on and who all uh, and who is doing what that is one thing and then comes the this thing of locating faults in there if it occurs. So, that is fault management. 
and then you have configuration management. The configuration of certain network devices controls the behavior of the data network. So, configuration management is the process of finding and setting up that is configuring these critical devices. <coughs> Security management is the process of controlling access to information on the data network, provides a way to monitor access points and records information on a periodic basis and provides audit trails and sounds alarms for security breaches. Uh, we will be um, talking more about security in the next uh, lecture uh, that is a, a very big topic by itself, but we will devote one only one lecture to it. Uh, uh, anyway, so there we will talk a little bit more about the security management and securities in network. Performance management involves measuring the performance of the network hardware, software and media. Examples of measured activities are overall throughput, percentage utilization, error rates, response time. Uh, so, this is very important. Okay. Um, quite often uh, a fault in a network uh, does not uh, uh, come in a black and white that is uh, uh, working or faulty that kind of situation. You may uh, there may be degradation in performance. For example, in one particular network node you may find that a lot of packets are getting dropped. All right. So, uh, you have to find out periodically that who uh, is doing what and how in the sense that uh, okay, uh, what percentage uh, I mean how many packets it has handled, how many it has handled successfully, how many it has dropped and so on. And from such statistics you have to uh, come to a conclusion about whether this is really malfunctioning or not. So, error rates is important response time percentage utilization once again there are ways to find out these things and we will talk about them. <coughs> and finally, accounting management involves tracking individuals utilization and grouping of network resources to ensure that users have sufficient resources. Okay. Involves granting or removing permission for access to the network etcetera. So, that is also uh, important in uh, many cases. <coughs> Now, the protocol that is used for network management this is known as SNMP, simple network management protocol. So, its objectives are the following, it is a framework for managing devices in an internet using TCP IP, provides a set of fundamental operat operations for monitoring and maintaining an internet and application level protocol allows it to monitor devices made by different manufacturers installed on different physical networks. Okay. So, uh, this is to be uh, understood that means, it is not that uh, in a particular network um, all the network devices will come from the same vendor. Okay. You may have uh, uh, procured some of the devices at some point of time from some vendor, some other uh, devices from some other vendor. So, uh, now the network management of course, and all of them form a part of the same network. So, when you are talking about network management in that uh, place. So, you have to talk about managing all these heterogeneous platforms. So, there has to be a standard protocol, there has to be a standard protocol by which the network manager can talk to each of these devices. By the way, um, uh, there are uh, um, I mean when you uh, look at the network devices which are available in the market, you will find that broadly there are two types of devices, managed device and unmanaged device for example, a switch, a managed switch and an unmanaged switch. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, obviously, the uh, a switch which is unmanaged uh, do not support this SNMP and do not have uh, the so called uh, management agent in it. Uh, we will talk about management agent pres presently. So, in order to manage and you have to get the information about it from a central place, uh, the devices have to be managed. So, uh, at the very edge of the network somewhere for cost consideration you may put some uh, unmanaged devices, but then of uh, management of fault etcetera for those devices have to be handled separately. I mean you cannot monitor them centrally for monitoring it centrally you have to have managed devices. So, they may these man so managed devices would contain some kind of software and some hardware support inside uh, each of the device uh, to talk to the uh, this uh, network management station wherever it is locked. Uh, uh, so, the usually this uh, costs uh, money 
but uh, for a large network this is important. So, uh, so this is a very simplified picture we have the network manager here and through the TCP IP protocol it talks to the to an agent this agent resides in the device in a managed device and these agents will have some agent variables which should be available uh, to this manager for monitoring that is the basic idea. So, agent a router or host that runs SNMP the SNMP server program by the way apart from uh, um, um, managing uh, network devices, you can also have management agents in softwares etcetera uh, to instrument it in some fashion that is also possible. Now, the what the agent does is it keeps uh, performance information in a database can send a trap to the manager if something unusual occurs. So, trap is in sort of alert to the manager. So, we will come to this. And the manager is a host that runs the SNMP client program has access to values in the agents database. So, based on three basic ideas a manager checks an agent by requesting information that reflects the behavior of the agent. A manager forces an agent to perform a task by resetting values in the agent database. An agent contributes to the management process by warning the manager of an unusual situation. So, these are the three basic approaches and we have uh, specific uh, commands for doing all these. SNMP uses two other protocols SMI structure of management information and uh, MIB management information base. So, one is used for uh, naming objects as we will see and the other is the basic uh, management information base which is accessed by the manager. So, SNMP defines the format of packets exchange between a manager and an agent. It reads and changes the status that is values of objects variables in SNMP packets. And SMI defines the general rules for naming objects, defining object types including range and length and showing how to encode objects and values. SMI defines neither the number of objects an entity should manage nor the names of the objects to be managed nor defines the association between the objects and their values. Uh, so, instead what SMI does is to have some scheme for giving names to the objects the names are of course, not human friendly as we will see they look as a series of uh, integers anyway, but there is a way of <coughs> encoding the names of objects in a way so that it we are very precise and distinct about what we are talking about taking into consideration that we can have an absolutely homogeneous uh, heterogeneous uh, network. Okay. So, we will come to this part uh, later on and the role of MIB, MIB creates a collection of named objects their types and their relationships to each other in an entity to be managed. Now, SNMP a group was formed uh, in the refer and their efforts were complete in early 1993. There are 12 documents describing the SNMP version 2, there is an SNMP version 3 also. There are three basic commands that are used with SNMP get, set, get next okay. and these are the basic operations then you can have bulk get and all that. And this is the general uh, uh, situation that we have. Uh, we have um, um, the network uh, management station. So, this is uh, the, and there may be more than one network management station in a very critical network uh, you may have two uh, network management stations etcetera we will come to these issues later on. So, we have some network management station which uh, runs some network management application NMA and this NMA this software talks in SNMP with managed devices. So, these are network uh, 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 nodes uh, so or network elements which are managed. So, this NMA that is the network management application talks using the SNMP protocol to the management agent which resides in every managed object uh, and this managed object maintains the MIP that is the management information base and from this the information passes back and forth. So, this is the general scheme. There are two approaches for the management system to obtain information from SNMP. One is a traps, the other is polling. 
So, first let us talk about traps. So, traps are basically the information uh, which is coming, which is being pushed from the uh, age, uh, from the managed device to the uh, network management station. So, traps are unrequested event reports that are sent to a management system by an SNMP agent process A. <coughs> a trap will contain network device name, time the event happened and the type of event. So, when a trappable event occurs, a trap message is generated by the agent and is sent to a trap destination, a specific configured network address which is the network address for the uh, management station. Many events can be configured to signal a trap like a network cable fault, failing NIC or hard drive, a general protection fault or a power supply failure. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, was, uh, although many events can be configured to signal a trap, but uh, how, I mean what event you will configure as a trap, there are pros and cons, there are trade offs and we will uh, talk about these trade offs uh, later on. Traps can also be throttled, you can limit the number of traps sent per second from the agent. Okay. So, um, <coughs> this is important, for example, uh, a faulty node may keep on generating a very large number of traps. Okay. So, that itself will overwhelm the uh, network and it will not uh, carry any extra information um, helping the uh, helping setting right the fault. Okay. So, you may have to uh, con constrain the number of traps that can be generated may be per unit time or something. And traps have a priority associated with them, critical, major, minor, warning, marginal, informational, normal, unknown, etcetera. Okay. Actually, it is not, it may not be a good idea to uh, generate traps very often because uh, uh, that means, uh, that means for low priority, maybe you should not be generating any trap at all. Because if you do that, please remember that a network may consist of maybe uh, something of the order of a few hundred or a few thousand network devices and if all of them generate uh, routine reports and keep on sending traps, uh, uh, that may uh, that, that may not be very uh, effective way of managing the network. Resources are required on the network devices to generate uh, a trap. When a lot of events occur, the network bandwidth may be tied up with traps. So, thresholds can be used to help. Because the network device has a limited view, it is possible the management system has already received the information and the trap is redundant. The point is something has happened somewhere else uh, and um, somebody else has detected it and generated a trap. Now, so that is not generating any extra or relevant uh, information. The network management system periodically queries the network device for information. So, this is the other uh, mode which is SNMP polling. So, from time to time the network management agent will request for some information from the management agent and this may, it may do in a uh, round robin fashion, uh, in a periodic fashion and using some period which of course, is uh, configurable. The advantage is the network management system is in control and knows the big picture. So, this is the other way, one is trap, the other is polling. The disadvantage is the amount of delay uh, from when an event occurs to when it is noticed. Short interval network bandwidth is wasted, long interval response to events is too slow. The point is that if you are depending only on uh, polling um, and if you are polling at a very low frequency, then uh, after your last poll immediately after that some event may have occurred, some fault may have occurred, but you will discover that only when you poll next. All right. <coughs> so, in a long interval the response to events is uh, quite slow. Uh, on the other hand, if you poll very fast, then most of the network bandwidth and network resources are being used for uh, just uh, uh, this uh, network management. So, that is not very efficient and bandwidth is wasted. So, you have to come to some kind of a, a trade off between the two. So, one good way uh, to approach this is to use both traps and polling. When an event occurs, the network devices generates a simple trap. The management system then polls the network device to get the necessary information. 
the management system also does a low frequency polling as a backup uh, to the trap. Mm, uh, what might have happened also, I mean you cannot uh, depend purely on trap for one reason is that the network device may have gone down in such a way, so that it is not even able to generate a trap. In that case the trap will never come, only thing is that when the network management station pulls that particular device, so he will fail to respond. So, that way he will find out that okay, something is wrong. So, there is so you should use a mixture of trap and polling to do your management. <coughs> So, there are, so, now let us quickly go through the types of SNMP packets. One is a GET request, retrieves the value of a variable or a set of variables and GET NEXT request, used to retrieve values of entries in a table. So, next entry. GET BULK request, retrieves a large amount of data used instead of multiple GET request and GET NEXT uh, request. So, that in one go you can get a lot of information. So, um, bandwidth is conserved set request, set or store a value in a uh, variable uh, and response, response to get request or get next request contains values of uh, variables requested. Trap, send from agent to manager to report an event. Inform request, send from one manager to another remote manager to get a value of some value from agents under the control of the remote manager report designed to report some type of errors between managers not uh, very widely used. So, now we come to the uh, SNMP data types. Uh, these data types have to be as we said that since a uh, network may contain heterogeneous uh, I mean devices from uh, different uh, vendors. Uh, so, we have to have some uh, so, for the so, so each vendor will of course, design his own agent. So, he has to agree to some kind of standard which, uh, about what will be uh, there. So, this uh, and but of course, at the same time we do not want to standardize things in such a way, so that people cannot innovate and bring up come up with uh, new kinds of uh, uh, devices. So, uh, what are defined are the different data types, the different types of variables uh, as we will see. So, the different data types one is an integer, it is agreed to be a signed 32 bit integer, octet string that is a byte string, object identifier this is one of the most uh, important uh, data types and we will look into the details of object identifiers when we talk about SMI, null not actually a data type, but a data value, IP address is a special data type is an octet st a string of size 4, 4 bytes you know that we are for IPv4 we are using 4 byte addresses in network byte order. Then you have a counter, it unsigned 32 bit integer which rolls over, uh, you see 32 bit <coughs> will count to about 4 trillion all right. Now, after the counter value is uh, the end of the counter value is reached it will roll over that means it will go back to 0 and start counting from 0 again. This counter etcetera are most important because that is what will give you uh, the statistics about the network. For example, you want to know that in the last uh, maybe um, 10 minutes or so how many packets this has, he has handled, how many packets he has dropped, how many packets has been successfully processed etcetera. So, such information the management station may want to know. So, this, these are the kind of statistics that you uh, sort of collect. So, you have to have these counters for these different values. Now, a counter you know that after some time it is going to go back to 0. So, you have to take care of that. The other um, Mm, actually, what you might do is that if uh, this uh, going back to 0 is not, then after a poll uh, when you have got the value and when you see that the counter value is sufficiently high, you may like to set it to 0 deliberately, so that you get the right count next time. Then gauge, unsigned 32 bit integer once again the same as counter, but it will top out and stay there. That means, 
that it is going to stop out and the next time you come it will not show a very low value it will show that high value although some more has and if you see that the gauge has stopped out maybe you can reset it after that but you get the uh, get some uh, estimate of what has happened rather than a rolled over value time ticks unsigned 32 bit integer so 32 bit integer rolls over after 497 days now 497 days is of course very very long in uh, this network world opec used to create new data types not in snmp version 1 and then there is uh, some other special data types for specific purpose like date and time display string mac address physical address time and interval time stamp truth value variable pointer textual conventions used as types so these are also there so these are the different snmp data types now let us just have a look at snmp mibs management information base is a collection of related managed objects used to define what information you can get back from the network devices these are standard and enterprise specific mibs uh, the point is that some uh, things may be standard all right and there are some information about a device since say let us say we have a device uh, which is designed by let us say cisco all right so uh, that may have its own speciality not found in other uh, vendors so that speciality will require some information which is specific to that particular vendor so we have vendor specific information also and we have general information also <coughs> there are standard and enterprise specific MIPS and of course it will not do if later on you mix up between the two that means something which is vendor specific and something which is specific to vendor 1 and something which is specific to vendor 2 uh, these two are to be separated so naming of objects is very important as we will see so there are standard and enterprise specific MIPS so types of mid module standard these are the standard mibs currently designed to capture the core aspects of a particular technology experimental temporary and if achieved standardization then it is placed in the standard module and then enterprise specific vendor specific mibs that provide additional management capabilities for those features that require it and if you uh, are using the mib you also require uh, the MIB tools, you require a MIB compiler, you require a MIB browser, a MIB alias tool, a MIB query tool, <coughs> a, MIB, a, a, a MIB browser that means it allows you to uh, look at the that means browse to the management information base in a particular device directly and MIB alias is required uh, because as you will see that the naming is very complex. Uh, so, once you have set up a given a name you do not want to uh, sort of uh, repeat that name in every query so you have an aliasing tool and a mib query tool smi structure and identification of managed information the smi defines the rules for how managed objects are described and how management protocols may access these objects functions are to name objects to define the type of data that can be stored in an object to show how to encode data for transmission over network. So, name SMI requires each managed object that is router variable in a router etcetera have a unique name. So, a router will have a name a variable in a router will also have a name and a specific um, router coming from some company X that will also also have uh, that should also be some way of describing that. So, this naming convention really starts from an <laughs> absurdly high level uh, as we will see and it uses that integer dot representation. Uh, so, uh, so there is a name dot notation actually uh, what is there is that this ISO has defined a very global uh, naming tree all right it starts from iso itself all right and under iso there are so many things and under each of these there are so many things as we will just currently see for example um, 
it says say iso.org.dod.internet.management.mib2 when i say this much actually this iso has got the number 1 then under iso there are so many entities one of them is an organization something called organization so that has an entity a number 3 and in this organization <coughs> organization others actually and then there is an uh, this thing called department of defense of us that is an entity under this so that has got a value 6 and then under the Department of Defense, so these were all uh, sort of, lot of uh, sort of decided by ISO, and you know that ISO is an European, mainly European organization. So Department of Defense didn't even possibly take note of it. So when the internet started under Department of Defense, they saw that ah now nobody has used anything of this naming convention. So let us take one for ourselves. So they took one, and then management uh, is a dot two and then MIB is dot 2. You see up to this much we have not even come anywhere close to the uh, particular device uh, that we are trying to manage. Okay. We will come to that later on slowly. So, all objects managed by SNMP are given an object identifier. So, uh, the object identifier always starts with 1.3.6.1.2.1 because we are talking about uh, network management and in network management uh, naturally it has to do with network. So, if it is has to do with network maybe it has got to do with some MIB 2 and then internet and then and since it is the internet it has to do with DOD and all the way up to ISO. So, that 1.3.6.1.2.1 etcetera that is always the prefix of any name and there are many other integers with many more uh, dots in them. And apart from uh, I mean this an uh, object in SMI is a textual name is also there in SMI termed the object descriptor for object type along with its corresponding object identifier which is defined as we have discussed. We will see again uh, have a look at it. Syntax the abstract syntax for the object type it can be a choice of simple syntax that is integer octet string etcetera or an application syntax. A definition is a textual description of the semantics of the object type. What type of object is it? Access one of the read only, read write, write only or not accessible that kind of access is defined and status one of mandatory, optional or obsolete. So, this object identifier uh, this is also a part of that is a is like a telephone number and as we mentioned that it always starts with 1.3.6.1.2 uh, uh, and SMI uses it as the base for defining new objects. So, uh, as I was saying that uh, in the first group there was ISO was 1, CCITT was 2 uh, for the joint ISO CCITT there was a number 3. So, since this is under ISO uh, so, we uh, that is how the first one comes. The second group for, for the ISO node administrator defines 3 for use by other organizations. So, 1.3 that 3 is other organization actually there are a, a large number of things in that particular group in that particular level as I said that we are having a global naming tree for naming anything under the sun. So, it starts with so uh, there is a thing called other organization that other organization is 3 and the third group defines <coughs> 6 for the use of US Department of Defense. So, I 1.3.6. In the fourth group the DOD has not indicated how it will manage. So, internet is 1 took it as 1. The fifth group was approved by IAB to be 1 for the use of OSI directory, 2 for object identification for management purpose. So, this is uh, the uh, one that we are interested in etcetera. And then finally, so you will have 1.3.6.1.2.1.1.1. etcetera that way it uh, goes it uh, has to since it is a global naming tree you have to come quite deep down to come to any particular level. The point is uh, not only individual now over there finally, um, it is possible that not only you have some network devices etcetera somewhere down in the tree. Uh, you also have uh, some subtrees for specific vendors. So, this naming can go down that subtree to talk about something specific to a particular vendor 
or even if suppose you have come down to the tree somewhere and now you have got into a, a router. Okay. Now, in the router also we want to talk about interfaces, we want to talk about other things. So, the tree also goes down from that point. So, the point is this way through this naming procedure we can exactly specify uh, anything that is being talked about in this whole management scenario. Only trouble is this is nice, only thing trouble is that this is almost impossible for human beings to remember any of these names or any of these things. Uh, so, but, na, but uh, um, uh, actually the network management um, application uh, that handles this, that makes this query to MIPS etcetera. So, you are, you are usually spared the trouble of looking into this, but if you look into this you will find such object identifiers in the MIP. And the, and the MIB group, MIB 2 group, so this was divided into these 10, I think uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. These uh, 10, uh, 10 groups, one for system, one for interfaces, one for address translation, one for internet protocol, and so on. And the number of objects in each of this uh, group uh, is given over here, all right. So, we need not go into the uh, details of this any longer. So, we have a system group which have a system descriptor, system object ID, system uptime, system contact. <coughs> so, system uptime is time since last uh, reinitialization, all right. Uh, system object ID is vendor's object identification and so on. So, this way you can really talk about uh, and this makes the scheme very general so that even heterogeneous. Uh, I mean devices from heterogeneous vendors that can also be um, accommodated and you can talk about very standard things. So, this is why it was done this way. Now, let us uh, just look at uh, some um, go up and look at a network management platform. Okay. Historically, network management revolved around multiple systems, each managing one specific set of components or the data network. Now, restrictions of money, physical space and technical expertise led to the desire to have the components managed by a single system that would show their interconnections on a network map. So, this is how a network management platform evolved. So, it is a software package that provides the basic functionality of network management for different network components. So, a network manage, management platform has to be a sort of general kind of software which can accommodate. For example, for on the one side you have uh, for specific vendors for uh, <coughs> managing a specific set of devices you may have some network management application etcetera which is there. So, <coughs> but uh, a network management platform, but then you may I mean you have this uh, particular an um, uh, application from this vendor for managing his devices, then you have some other uh, uh, network management uh, application for uh, some other devices from some other vendor etcetera. But then finally, you would like to sit in one place and have a have the big picture. So, there has to be a platform on which which can uh, sort of couple with these different network management applications. So, that is the network management platform, that is the general software that is there which is running, which can integrate all these different components. So, the goal of the platform is to provide generic functionality for managing a variety of network devices. Now, there are some functionality and some requirements for network management which is very general. So, that is those are sort of collected in the network management platform and if there are some very specific things that you have to talk about for uh, particular type of network device may be from that particular vendor and that is out of the platform. <coughs> um, although the, uh, that can uh, that software can uh, integrate with this uh, network management platform. So, that is the idea of having a network management platform. So, basic features for any platform to include a graphical user interface GUI, a network map as I mentioned towards the beginning. Uh, one of the first thing uh, that a network management platform should do or is expected to do is to go on discovering the uh, different network devices which are uh, right now uh, on. That means, which um, 
uh, which you can access, which are accessible etcetera and those which are not accessible. Uh, that means, which were supposed to be previous to there and it would be nice that if you can show it graphically uh, on a screen may be showing different colors for different and different icons for different types of nodes and different colors whether showing that whether it is working, not working, switched off etcetera. And if you can see that picture then you get the big picture in one go. So, this network map is very important. A DBMS naturally want to keep this net management data and then uh, query it etcetera. So, you need some DBMS. You need a standard method to query devices and customizable menu system, event log. So, these are basic features for any platform and additional features for a platform using a graphic graphing tools that means, showing you in pictures that means, how each uh, say particular device uh, how it is performing you want to see it uh, graphically by some kind I means some some kind of plot. So, it should be able to show you the plot very easily. So, this graphing tools that is also an integral part. Then the application program interface, the application this API is important because you see uh, that even if when you even when after you have finished talking about all these generic uh, network uh, management <coughs> aspects which are very generic very general, then you also have these special aspects for these which these different vendors are going to give you uh, <coughs> special uh, tools. This special tools now has to integrate with this network management platform. So, that is why an API that is the application programming interface that has to be very clearly defined. And then finally, a uh, system security this is always there. So, network management platform, some examples of network management platform, Sun, Sun Net Manager, IBM's NetView, HP's OpenView. HP's OpenView by the way is a very uh, widely used uh, network management platform into this thing uh, etcetera. Now, if you remember one diagram we showed then in which we showed two network management stations etcetera, uh, that has to do with the network management architecture and the network management platform can use various architectures to provide functionality. The three most common are centralized, hierarchical and distributed. In the centralized architecture of course, as the name suggests that you have one central network management station uh, or network management platform resides on a single computer system that is a centralized system. Uh, of course, uh, in that case that particular station becomes absolutely critical, because in a large network the network management software is used all the time. So, if you have them centrally that may become a single point of failure. So, what you may do is that you may put duplicate the same thing on another machine, so that if one of them fails, so that I mean you do not want to have single points of failure in a network if you want to make at least the critical components of it and network management is a critical component of a large network. So, you may like to have a fail back a fallback mechanism that in case the first one fails, the primary one fails, the other one can immediately take over. Even then although now we have put two uh, say network management stations, even then this is a uh, centralized architecture. <coughs> so, for full redundancy the computer system is backed up by another system can allow access and forward events to other consoles on network ok that is possible. So, this is a centralized architecture. Now, this is used for all network alerts and events all network information access all management applications etcetera. So, this is the uh, this is uh, so one central architecture is used for this thing the pros are the following. You have a single location to view events and alerts, a single place to access network management applications and information uh, and a security is easier to uh, maintain that means, <coughs> this is of course, the uh, advantages. So, in one place you get all the all that you want to view and it is easier to make it secure and a single place to access the NMA, NMA. Because using the NMA you by using set etcetera you can also do things to the network. So, you do not want any unauthorized person to have access to the network management station. And the cons of the centralized architecture is disadvantages. 
So, it is a single system uh, that is it is not redundant or fault tolerant. Of course, you can make it somewhat fault tolerant by keeping uh, by keeping another machine, but if the connection to this room is somehow um, cut then the entire network becomes a black box. As network elements are added may be difficult or expensive to scale the system to handle the load. This is a more important point and having to query all devices uh, from a uh, single location. So, as a matter of fact think of an enterprise of today. Now, an enterprise of today that may really be uh, across various uh, locations it may be over a van and each and many of these locations may be quite big. So, uh, network that you in an enterprise that may want to control centrally may become too big. So, there is a question of whether a central uh, server can scale it to that extent and so, suppose it is um, uh, uh, and, uh, and there are problems for example, van bandwidth some part of it is over a van. And then uh, van bandwidth is also a problem because if all the network management traffic is also coming over a van then that becomes uh, quite an expensive scenario. Sometimes you, but at the same time you have this advantage of a centralized architecture that in one place you can view all the things. So, these are the pros, pros and cons. <coughs> so, having to query all devices from a single location may not be good. So, we go to the next uh, step which is a hierarchical architecture. So, what you may uh, want to do is that uh, just uh, <coughs> so uses multiple computer system and one system acting as the central server other systems working as clients central server requires backups for redundancy. So, this is the situation now once again think of that same enterprise which is distributed geographically. So, maybe let us say over uh, five different uh, locations and in each of these locations you have a big uh, local area network to uh, manage. So, what you might do is that for each of these locations you may put its, its own uh, sort of uh, management station who will manage the local network and then there you can put a central uh, um, <coughs> server and all these um, management sta uh, stations in these different locations would be the client to the central server. So, the only the inform uh, important information only the condensed and summarized information is coming to the central location via the <coughs> van. So, that you conserve van bandwidth at the same time you have a central location where you can get the entire picture and if you want then you can talk to one of the clients and drill down and look at the um, look at the specifics if there are some problems somewhere. So, that is one uh, point where so, uh, so this has got all kinds of other advantages for example, very um, good and ex also expensive uh, network experts you can keep only in the central location. So, that as soon as he can detect that there is a problem there then over the network itself he can actually drill down and give expert advice as to what to do over there. So, this is an advantage. So, this is an hierarchical architecture of course, the central server can also be backed up for redundancy. So, key features not dependent on a single system. So, even if on a single system or a single link is cut, but still somehow the network is being managed. Distribution of network management tasks. So, that is distributed now network mo monitoring distributed throughout the network and centralized information storage is all also there. So, these are the advantages of uh, hierarchical architecture. So, multiple systems to manage the network. The disadvantage information gathering is more difficult and time consuming because it is coming through two layers and the list of managed devices managed by each client needs to be predetermined and manually configured. <coughs> that means, um, that uh, uh, and that has to be um, and, and that is to be done. So, this may be some disadvantage and then we have a distributed architecture uh, combines the centralized and hierarchical architecture uses multiple peer network management systems each peer can have a complete database each peer can perform various tasks and report back to a central system. So, 
uh, you uh, see um, that uh, I mean previously we were uh, this one central uh, station, one central station and the others they were in a sort of a master slave kind of situation or that one was the central server. Now, they are all peers. So, each of them can keep uh, an entire database if it wants to. Uh, so, each of them can work as a um, as a network uh, central network management station. So, and they are uh, distributed. So, this is another model. So, contains advantages from central and hierarchical architecture single location for all network information alerts and events, single location to access all management applications not dependent on a single system, distribution of network management tasks and distribution of network monitoring throughout the network. <coughs> now, let us come to, uh, so we have been talking about the, uh, we have talked already talked about the network management platform like op HP OpenView or something all right. Now, let us talk about specific network management applications. So, the goals of specific network management applications are to effectively manage a specific set of devices, avoid functionality overlap with the platform, platform means the network management platform, integrate with a platform through the API and menu system, reside on multiple platforms. So, these are the goals. So, applications do not share information that means app, uh, one between two applications because these two applications may have come from two different vendors. Some examples are uh, Cisco's, uh, Cisco works or 3 comes transcend etcetera. Choosing a network management system built from two major components the platform and applications. A practical approach follow these steps perform device inventory, prioritize the functional areas of network management survey network management applications and choose the network management platform. Now, we will just mention about uh, another uh, term which comes quite often that is a uh, ARMON which is a remote monitoring MIP. These have agents and pros. So, this is actually used for <coughs> uh, uh, monitoring a MIP remotely. Uh, um, uh, and uh, the um, and there are specific groups for this arm on there is statistics group, history group, alarm group, host group, host top end etcetera. They are standardized to only operate on ethernet segments. So, that uh, even apart from network management stations you can monitor it from other places also. I think um, I am going to uh, stop here as um, you can see. So, what I have tried is to give you a broad overview of uh, this network management uh, system uh, and as uh, it, it is going. So, it is uh, evolving and, and a lot of it, uh, I mean network management is, an, is a thing which you cannot really do in a meaningful, in today's world you cannot do meaningful network management without machine support, you cannot do it manually that uh, those days are actually gone and the uh, in a large network the number of events that are happening is really tremendous and it is not also possible to keep a log. I mean the machine of course, keeps a log and you will see that after a month or so the log has become so big maybe you have to delete it from your machine and then uh, the log starts accumulating at a uh, very high rate because the network traffic uh, is flowing back and forth at a tremendous pace and you have to uh, somehow. Uh, I mean keep track of those at the same time keep a balance okay. that is the major part in designing a network management system keep a balance keep a balance among traffic uh, track and polling keep a balance about what information you will take and what information you will not take keep a balance about how much you are going to manage. Thank you. Good day. So, our the topic for today is network security. Uh, as the uh, network is becoming ubiquitous in the sense that it is becoming widely available to people, many people have started uh, giving services through network and these services are crucially dependent on uh, 
security. For example, you want to do a bank transaction uh, uh, through the network, so that from anywhere you can log on to the network and uh, do your banking. Now, this banking service of course, is uh, very, very um, sensitive, so that if security is breached, then the whole uh, thing falls down. So, today, I mean security once again is a very uh, big topic. So, today we will talk uh, just uh, some overview of some security features in networks. So, network security, what is it? What is the purpose of a network? It moves bit from A to B and this movement, we want this securely. And what exactly do we mean that uh, secu uh, securely? Well, uh, of course, then bits from A to B must reach, well, bits from A must reach B, but we also want confidentiality in the sense that only A and B see bits. Uh, that means, there is, uh, if there is some, someone in between, he cannot uh, find out about the communication, about the content of the communication from A to B, because it may be, I mean A may be a client and B may be a bank. Uh, so, uh, so, this has to be secure. Integrity, the message must reach from A to B intact. Uh, in a, so, maybe this is in a slightly better diagram. So, you have the original document, you use a one way function or a hash function, the hash result is now encrypted with the secret key or the private key of the signer, this gives the digital signature. Now, the receiver we should get the original document plus the digital signature. Of course, if you want to now, um, I mean sort of uh, ensure that this does not, the original document also should not be seen by anybody, then this entire thing, that means the original document plus the digital signature, that you can now encrypt using the public key of the receiver. So, what the receiver will do is that receiver will decrypt it using his own private key, so that he gets back this. Now, the question is that, now anybody since a public key may be public, so anybody could have sent this document, how do I know that this actually came from whoever it uh, purports to be? That is where the digital signature uh, part comes in. So, what the receiver, what he will do? He can verify by applying one way hash function to the received document. So, he will apply the same hash function to this document. So, he will get, uh, he is supposed to get back whatever was here. Now, he will decrypt the signature using the sender's public key. He has the sender's public key with him. So, and since it was uh, encrypted with the sender's private key, now I can use the uh, private key of the sender to get back the same uh, message. So, comparing the two results, equality means document is unmodified. Thank you.